first kayaks date back to the 1500s and were used primarily by the Inuits for hunting. Variations of the canoe date back to a staggering 8000 BC. By 1930 kayaks had made it to the Olympic Games and were used to explore deep Austrian whitewater gorges. Fiberglass kayaks were introduced in the 1960s and with the help from boat building enthusiasts from around the world, things began to escalate. One of these young innovators, a young UK based trainee accountant, Graham McGrath, fresh from racing K2 in the 1972 Munich Olympics and a keen slalom paddler, left the dull world of accountancy to build kayaks full time. What started as a hobby soon became a thriving family business called Piranha Kayaks. It would be late in 75 when I went to a slalom at uh, Thlandisl and we were there selling bits and pieces out the back of the van and Jones, who I got to know a, a bit, came up and said, I fancy going to Everest. How about you give me a dozen boats? I'd never given anybody a boat before in my entire life. Uh, Mike was tapping Graham up for some f boats for this expedition that I knew nothing about at the time. I mean, lots of people use the cliche phrase, it was a life-changing experience. But in my world, for me, it really was. Mike turning around to Graham and saying, you know, we've got this idea, we might need some boats. And Graham said, I don't know at the moment, the business is a little bit new. But anyway, that's where I met Graham. Because if I hadn't been involved with the Everest trip, I would have gone out, got a job as a civil engineer, got a mortgage, 2.2 kids in a Ford Cortina in those days was the idea. So I finished the two weeks exams, I went down the Gower and went surfing in a kayak, breaking left to find out what happened to the left hand side, because I never knew that. I'd been five years racing C1 slalom. But we really learned off that that you know we needed to evolve our white water boats and so by the time we got to the next expedition a year later they were great big round ended monsters that we call the Orinoco and we quickly evolved into becoming not just a slalom company uh, but also a white water company and we've enjoyed helping people with their fulfill their dreams, uh, their expeditions, and, um, and trying to push design on. We were talking about designs and stuff, and Dave told me all about the Everest trip and the boats that they'd been, been using there, and how he was a C1 paddler, and all kinds of crazy stuff. But anyway, the conclusion was that, that um, I should go talk to Graham up at Piranha. Trip and I said to Graham, if Alan Ellard and Johnny P get in touch with you, give them boats. And I told Johnny P and Alan Ellard to ask. Graham rang me up and said, are oh, those two as good as you say they are? I said, yeah, I ain't seen any two that good for a long, you know, for a while. Uh, you know, I've always hugely valued Dave's opinion on things, on people, and uh, that's right, they did point me in those boys' direction. Graham was quite uh, interested that I try his boat out. So I went up to Piranha and I picked up this Creek 280 and that was the first time I met Graham and sort of got my foot in the door with Piranha. 96 till 2000, it was, it was this continuous circle of the Himalayas, New Zealand, Europe, the Alps, back to the Himalayas, we finally found ourselves up in Norway. H2 came along and that was kind of a revolutionary uh, move for us. It was a, a flat bottom boat, so it would still spin around and, and surf nice, but it was more comfortable and faster and you could fit more things in it. So that was sort of the start of doing slightly harder expeditions. Alan Ellard went on to explore huge quantities of India with the Whitewater Warriors. Johnny P became a British freestyle champion. But Bren, you know, again, is the latest evolution of some fantastic paddlers. I bumped into Bren Orton. I think it's bloody amazing what kids can do, what anybody can do in kayaks these days. 
one of the videos that I loved most back in the day was of the Everest expedition with Dave Namby. How those guys willing to like just go for it and just wing it a little bit, how that created the innovation and the drive to make things better for expeditions and make things, make kayaks that can be used in these situations. But, but Brendan's set saying it how it is. He's, he's telling you when it hurts. He's telling you when it's scary. And he's telling you how he plans for that. It, it's pretty awesome. All of a sudden, I saw a video of the Whitewater Warriors, Alan Ellard, Mikey Abbott, Johnny Pierce, and all of these guys, and it just like, it just blew my mind, you know? I was like, oh my God, these guys are going off waterfalls. They're doing like cartwheels and front flips in their kayaks. They're getting vertical. And it just, it just came across as this just like insane, it, just this insane sport. And my young mind was just like, okay, it just shifted. It was, I was like, this is what I am doing from now on. There are so many different aspects of canoeing, whether you want to scare yourself or you want to have a peaceful afternoon with your partner or your child. You know, canoeing has, a vast amount to offer and it's a far more sophisticated and complex sport than many people understand and it's getting that message across to people uh, which is really a big challenge. Uh, Prana's a family you know it's like oh you're with Prana you know come no it's it's a family we got each other's backs we're like brothers and sisters in the company we make sure that we all work together and whatever needs to be done to make the company better it, it helps all of us, and that's why I like working here, and that's why I've been here for so long. Donut. That's what you eat when you don't catch any fish. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're owned by one man, Mr. Graham. And, you know, I think that says a lot for us, and it says a lot for, for who we are. We're not corporate-owned. We don't have to sit around and have corporate meetings on Monday morning, and we're not owned by a microwave company. We're owned by one individual, and that's what makes it special. Uh, Dave Manby and I exchanged the odd, the odd email and message online. So, um, yeah, those were those guys were true legends. I mean, those guys really did establish the sport and bring it to where and bring it to where it is today. Um, well, basically, there's some massive goats in our way. The people in, who work at Piranha love kayaking just as much as I do, and just as much as the rest of the team do. The kind of if you've got the love for the sport, you feel right at home within Piranha. I mean, we're, we're paddler owned, paddler driven. We, uh, we're one of the only, if not the only kayak companies that uh, is still owned by the, the same guy who started in 1971, you know, making kayaks in his parents' basement or in his garage, I guess. Um, we don't have to deal with the corporate aspects of a job. We get to say what we want and do what we want and come up with cool, cool products. We're all paddlers and uh, enthusiasts ourselves. Just that whole um, holistic uh, view from, from everyone, really. It says it best in the tagline, by enthusiasts, for enthusiasts. And that's really what Prana is about. And I'm just stoked to be a part of a company that has had, been a part of the progression of kayaking, of innovating the kayaks, of putting a team on the road that progresses the limits of kayaking. And I'm just really, Really proud and stoked to be a part of that and, and to be ushering in the next generation of Team Piranha. We just got to almost try and keep it right on the back of the pile. My favourite river is the River D. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody believes me. The state in Iran, we created the Afghan Talib. I'm sure, you know, you could go around and chase other people and get better offers, but no. Loyalty counts for a hell of a lot. I think I was out in Austria or something and I ended up making Snoopy bugger off. For God's sake. Uh, and my first ever piranha boat. I remember covering that boat with all kinds of crazy stickers because I thought I was a badass. And so I decided to spell it the Portuguese way. Um, Parada fish come from Brazil, Brazil speaks Portuguese, and so we spelled it P Y R A N H A. So that's how it started. Everything that rises must fall. Think you know now what you know, but you know what you see, and you see what they show.